over 120 years ago. Lush coconut palms and the potential of agriculture and tourism drew Henry Flagler to develop this strip of land between Lake Worth and the Atlantic Ocean. After building one hotel on the lakefront and another hotel on the ocean front, Palm Beach and the surrounding region was well on its way to becoming a tropical paradise. Today, the West Palm Beach region attracts visitors and residents with expansive wetlands, unspoiled nature to the west, a lively nightlife scene in West Palm Beach, a variety of activities for the active lifestyle, inspiring architecture, history, culture, art, and oh, did I mention the pristine beaches. In this video, we take you back to the Gilded Age of the late 1800s with a tour of the Bozar style Flagler Museum then to the 1920s Mediterranean Revival Shopping District of Worth Avenue. Have breakfast at a 1940s old-fashioned soda fountain style eatery drugstore. Show the public beaches of 27 miles of shoreline from Palm Beach to Jupiter Inlet, including Singer Island, Riviera Beach, Juneau Beach, MacArthur Beach State Park, and a boat ride to Peanut Island where we meet some nice people from Miami. We hop on a bike and show the lake trail of Palm Beach, cross the Intracoastal Waterway, and ride the waterfront of West Palm Beach along Flagler Avenue. Show a couple of catamaran cruises. Follow the Diva Duck on land and into the water. Also show the shopping districts of the Royal Poinciana Plaza, the square, formerly City Place, the Palm Beach Outlets Mall, and Clematis Street, the hub of entertainment in West Palm Beach. We travel to the Grassy Water Preserve, show the mountain bike trails and the cross-country trails of Dyer Park, take you inside the oldest structure of Palm Beach County, the Jupiter Inlet Lighthouse. We'll give you travel tips on dining, point out dog-friendly areas, give fishing tips, show some reasonable lodging. So come along as we show you the Palm Beaches by drone, by car, by bike, by foot, and by boat. A tropical paradise on the Gold Coast. It's sunrise at the Worth Avenue Clock Tower. What was expected to be a cloudy morning, the sun pops out through the dark clouds rewarding the early morning beachgoers. Like this sailboat, Palm Beach is a reminder of an earlier time period. This British colonial style colony hotel, just a block from the beach near Worth Avenue, is dog friendly, a charge of $100 per stay. We are coming here though for the great coffee. Olivia making us a pumpkin spice latte and a glorious morning muffin. I find these high-end hotels have far better baked pastries than your chain coffee shops. Let's take you back in time to where it all started for Palm Beach and really for that matter the east coast of Florida becoming a popular vacation getaway. The year was 1893 when this man Henry Flagler at the age of 63 was just beginning to put West Palm Beach on the map. After opening three hotels in St. Augustine which you can see in our St. Augustine video. He sets his eye on Palm Beach, a veritable paradise as he puts it. He buys this home, the Seagull Cottage, next to the Flagler Museum, currently Palm Beach's oldest home. And a year later, he builds the Royal Poinciana Hotel, the world's largest hotel at the time. It no longer stands, but was here near the Palm Beach Towers on the Lake Trail that we'll ride in just a bit. Two years later, he builds his second hotel, the Palm Beach Inn, this one on the ocean front. The name later changes to The Breakers. After being burnt down twice by fire, this current hotel opened at the end of 1926. As well as building hotels, Flagler builds the East Coast Railway, which eventually in 1912 would lay tracks all the way down to the Florida Keys. He knows his railroad would bring businesses to his hotels and vice versa. Come inside. Can I make you some tea? These overhead compartments drop down into a bed. At his hotels for $5 a day, people could ride in a wicker wheelchair. $5 in those days was a whole day's wage. 
Flagler would build his own estate, Whitehall, that he would move into in 1902. Now the Flagler Museum, which you can tour $18 for adults, $10 for youth 13 to 17, or $3 for children 6 through 12. Across the street from St. Edward's Catholic Church is Green's Pharmacy, an old-fashioned soda fountain-style eatery and drugstore, first opened in 1938. Maurice, Nancy, and Iris provide a friendly atmosphere, chatting with the customers. JFK, Jimmy Buffett, among many celebrities who have dined here, highly recommend getting a meal or a milkshake here to really experience Palm Beach culture. And you can pick up some personal items you may have forgotten to pack as well. Before I show you the shopping district of Worth Avenue, I want to show you some of the coastline of Palm Beach. We start about five miles south of Worth Avenue, just a little bit north of Lake Worth Beach. Heading north from Phipps Ocean Park to Municipal Beach in Palm Beach, it is private property, but makes for a great scenic drive. We pass Mar-a-Lago on the left, a private club and the estate of former President Trump. Many people come here to wine and dine. We gonna go wine and dine all over the town With the red fish and rum so fine We'll spin round and round The sun will go rise and shine We'll never slow down We gotta go wine and dine All over the town With amazing mansions on the left A gorgeous ocean view on the right It makes for a very scenic drive At Gulf Stream Road Two blocks south of Worth Avenue Clock Tower Is where the public parking begins Along South Ocean Drive At Municipal Beach so sturdy and solid Got pounds in my pocket And I don't want to wait We gonna go wine and dine All over the town We now head up Worth Avenue While Flagler put Palm Beach on the map As a tropical vacation destination It was a couple of decades later That Addison Meisner Would bring the Mediterranean revival architecture To the region it started with the Everglades Club, built in 1918 as a hospital for World War I vets, then converted to a social club a year later. And another year after that, a golf course was added. Meisner would go on to design 67 more buildings in Palm Beach. The Worth Avenue Shopping District is where you see a lot of that Mediterranean architecture. This district is known for upscale shopping with international dining options, a variety of restaurants, eateries, and cafes, where you can dine in Spanish artsy style courtyards. Cafe Via Flora is one of those cafes here. The sun will rise and shine, we'll never slow down. We gotta go wine and dine all over the town. A mile and a half away from Worth Avenue is the Royal Poinciana Plaza, this is a good place to park to ride the Palm Beach Lake Trail. The Palm Beach Trail Bicycle Shop is here, with a wide selection of bikes to rent to ride the trail. It's $20 an hour or $39 for a half day. We start about a mile and a half south of the Royal Poinciana Plaza. This five and a half mile path is mostly uninterrupted, with only a couple of areas where you have to cross the street. To the left, across Lake Worth, a nice view of West Palm Beach. It follows the lakefront, then at the Flagler Museum, the path winds around in front of the museum. Then you take Whitehall Way to Coconut Road briefly. At the Royal Poinciana Plaza, the South Lake Trail becomes the North Lake Trail. But we will cross over Lake Worth to West Palm Beach here. While everyone talks about the Lake Trail on the Palm Beach side, I'd also recommend crossing the bridge over the Intracoastal Waterway to the West Palm Beach side, very scenic. Pedestrian walkways on both sides of the bridge, as you'll see in all the bridges of West Palm Beach, makes this area very pedestrian friendly. On the West Palm Beach side, we start near the Royal Park Bridge, where the South Cove Natural Area is, a long boardwalk that goes out to a small island waterfront park. This West Palm Beach waterfront area, very scenic as well with palm trees, a wide sidewalk, plenty of room. We pass around Clematis Street, which we'll come back to after sunset. Across from Clematis Street is Visit Palm Beach Water Sports, where you can rent kayaks or paddle boards, or ride West Palm Beach's most popular cruise on the Hakuna Matata, 
A two-hour cruise aboard this catamaran is $45 for adults and $15 for children 12 and under. Sunset Cruise is $5 cheaper. There is also Palm Breeze Charters, another catamaran cruise out of Boca Raton. We now head back over the Flagler Bridge to ride on the North Lake Trail, back on the Palm Beach side. I want to point out a nice little park just north of the bridge. There are water fountains and restrooms here. A nice little well manicured garden area. Do I need to even say that? Everything in Palm Beach is well manicured. We continue on the North Lake Trail. This trail was at one time how those early pioneers traveled up and down the island. Of course, not paved like it is today. Parts of the trail, you are basically going through the backyards of nice mansions. A look at some of their yachts. Now that we have a ride back at the parking lot, let's show you around Poinciana Plaza. After your bike ride, there are several options to get a bite to eat. There's the Palm Beach Grill, Sellas Produce Cafe, where you can get fresh pressed juices, smoothies, healthy fresh sandwiches, breakfast, or coffee. Or for a nice sit-down elegant restaurant with outdoor dining, St. Ambrose. One last place in Palm Beach to show you, about a mile south of Poinciana Plaza, is the Society of the Four Arts botanical and sculpture garden. Also here you'll find art exhibitions, notable speakers, concerts, and films. See 4arts.org for scheduled programs. We now head over the Flagler Bridge into the heart of downtown West Palm Beach to what used to be called City Place, now known as The Square. It's an outdoor mall that is designed like an Italian plaza, an upscale entertainment lifestyle center. It blends shopping, dining, and nightlife along Rosemary Avenue. Restaurants include Cheesecake Factory, a Thai restaurant, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, and a true food kitchen. The Harriet Himmel Theater, built in 1926. It also has Revolutions Bowling, which has a video arcade, two fully stocked bars, a wall of TVs, and a restaurant. Parking for the square can be found at 545 Hibiscus Street near the AMC theaters. The 1916 County Courthouse is a history museum of Palm Beach County and is completely free. Currently on the front walkway, you can see pictures and learn about the hurricane of 1928, which was the second worst natural disaster in U.S. history in terms of lives lost. Over 3,000 people killed. Now we are ready to show you a tour that is partly on land and partly on water. We head inland to near I-95 to the Palm Beach Outlets Mall, where you can board the Diva Duck Tour. But first, let me show you the mall. This is an open-air outlet mall that features over 130 stores and restaurants. It has a really good vibe to it. We are going to grab a bite to eat at the Food Pavilion, where you can eat indoors or outdoors. A variety of good ethnic food. This Greek eatery, Suvlaki, has really great reviews. I had the veggie gyro. Incredibly delicious. The owner really nice. The Diva Duck boards in the back corner of the mall outside of Forever 21. The land tour takes you around the waterfront on Flagler Avenue where we were bike riding earlier. The tour is fully narrated. You learn about fun facts of West Palm Beach. There's that South Cove Nature Boardwalk again. You go over the Royal Park Bridge. Then it tours up the historic neighborhoods of Palm Beach. Then back over the bridge and along the waterfront. To Curry Common Park where it splashes into the Intracoastal Waterway. Then gives you a view of the mansions and the mega yachts from the water. A 75 minute tour is $39 for adults or $19 for youth 3 through 12. Before we show you the beaches north of West Palm Beach, I want to quickly show you some of the undisturbed nature areas of Palm Beach County. Grassy Waters Preserve is located on the other side of the Florida Turnpike, about 12 miles northwest of downtown West Palm Beach. These wetlands is where you can see native wildlife, pristine landscapes, via a nature walk on long boardwalks, 
or take a 90 minute kayak or canoe tour for $10 per person. See the link in the description of this video below for more info. The Blue Gill Trail, a nine mile trail that runs along the C-18 Canal from Grassy Waters Preserve to Riverbend Park in Jupiter, one of the most scenic South Florida levee bike trails. Or how about some mountain biking at Dyer Park, located just four miles from Grassy Waters Preserve. This park also has cross country running trails as well as paved bike trails. For the mountain bike trails, go all the way past the lacrosse fields to the end of the parking lot, then follow the gravel trail on the left that leads to the 2.5 mile looping mountain bike trail. Plenty of shade, one of the few trails in Florida is with a hill. It's only 55 feet of elevation, but in Florida, that is like a mountain. Okay, now back to the coastal areas. We enter Riviera Beach. On the right, the port of Palm Beach, where the Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line offers a two-night, three-day cruise to Grand Bahama Island aboard the Grand Classica. A mile north of the port of Palm Beach is Riviera Beach Marina Village, which sits across from Peanut Island and the Palm Beach Inlet. This once just a working marina has been transformed to a vibrant destination and a great hangout. A couple of eateries here, like the Rafiki Tiki Bar and Grill. You can also have a rooftop wedding here as well, an event space. There are paddle boards, kayaks, wave runners, and boats available for rental. There's diving and fishing charters. And of course, the popular shuttle to Peanut Island. This ferry provides a scenic ride to Peanut Island for $16 round trip or $8 for children eight and under. It's a quick 10 minute ride to the island. The Palm Beach Inlet in the distance there, which separates Palm Beach Island and Singer Island that we will show you in a little bit. This is a family-friendly, alcohol-free island. Dogs are permitted on this island. There is a campground here with 17 tent sites, a walking path around the island. The beaches here have crystal blue water. There's large pavilions on a first-come, first-served basis. These people from Miami enjoying Peanut Island. This island also great for fishing and snorkeling. Ran into Leonardo and Andrew who camped here last night. We caught snook, snook, yeah, um, jack, pompano. Wow, a lot of stuff. We're in a shark last night. Yeah, we're a shark yeah. fishing last night on that. Yeah. Oh. Like a shark jumped out of the water. Captain Hector and Captain Riley take us back to the marina. Another couple of miles north of Riviera Beach Marina is Lake Park Marina, where you can ride the Calypso and take either an ocean reef snorkeling trip or a Peanut Island snorkeling trip. We now cross the Blue Heron Bridge over to Singer Island. On the other side of the bridge is Phil Foster Park, as well as good fishing on the pier. The Blue Heron Bridge area with an artificial reef is internationally recognized for great scuba diving and snorkeling. With an abundance of marine life, squid, octopus, spotted rays, and starfish are regularly seen here. On Singer Island, there are two main public beach areas. On the south part of the island is Riviera Municipal Beach. I first pulled into here and thought, where's the beach? Looks like a shopping center. Well, the beach is behind the shopping center. The park's entry plaza features two restaurants. On the right, two drunken goats. It features a Mexican-American menu and serves breakfast as well. On the other side, Mulligan's Beach House Bar and Grill. A park area between the plaza and the beach with tennis courts, picnic tables, and barbecue grills shaded by trees. Boardwalks. A beach accessible wheelchair is available at the lifeguard stand. As for the beach, volleyball paddleball courts. It's a wide beach area, plenty of space, not very crowded. Beach chairs and umbrellas available. I thought this was one of the best beaches of the Palm Beach region. With plenty of services and eateries, it has everything you need. The other public beach on the north part of Singer Island is Ocean Reef Park, an advantage to Northern Palm Beach County as compared to the beach parks we saw in our Boca del Rey video in South Palm Beach County. The parking here tends to be free. Just north of Ocean Reef Park, the island becomes a narrow strip where you see multiple skyrise condos along North Ocean Drive. Then the condos stop and North Ocean Drive becomes Jack Nicholas Drive and we enter the city limits of North Palm Beach as you enter into a nice nature area. 
It is here High Point Paddle Adventures is located, where you can rent paddle boards $20 an hour or up to $40 for four hours for exploring around MacArthur Beach State Park or book a snorkel and paddleboard tour to explore the intracoastal reefs of the Lake Worth Lagoon. MacArthur Beach State Park has 1.6 miles of pristine beaches for swimming and snorkeling, as well as nature trails through tropical hammock and mangrove forests with a super long boardwalk over the lagoon to the beach. It's $5 to enter the park. We now enter Juneau Beach. On Highway 1 that runs a mile to the west and parallels A1A, there is a bike path along the highway from West Palm Beach to Jupiter, and also the Juneau Dunes natural area is here. This park has a couple of sand trails with boardwalk through sawgrass wetland that are about two miles long. Also an observation tower overlooking the basin marsh. Now back on Highway A1A, we come to the Juneau Beach Pier. To walk the pier, it's $1 for sightseeing or $4 for fishing. This pier is really well maintained with benches, snack bar, gift and bait store, with fishing equipment rentals available. Also across from Highway A1A from this beach is Ocean K Park, where there is more parking. And also two tenths of a mile north of the pier, which is now considered Jupiter Beach, begins parking along Ocean Boulevard. And it is here where there is Jupiter off-leash dog beach, the kind of beaches that Bella really likes. She don't like those leashes. The beaches here, as compared to further south on the Gold Coast, are just less crowded, more convenient, and free parking. Two miles north of the Juneau Beach Pier is the Jupiter Reef Club, where you can rent rooms by the week. It ranges from $1,200 to $1,700 with taxes for a one-bedroom suite, depending on the season. A tip, November and December, you'll find the cheapest rates, and the weather is great here. More parking along Highway A1A here north of the Jupiter Reef Club. This part of the beach popular for surfing. A half mile north of the Jupiter Reef Club is Carlin Park, a large beachfront recreation area with a large parking lot. There is the Lazy Loggerhead Cafe, a vintage eatery on the beach, but they do close early. Also plenty of covered pavilions surrounded by palm trees. The park extends across A1A where there are playgrounds, tennis courts, an amphitheater, hiking trails. Back on Highway 1, near the Jupiter Inlet is Burt Reynolds Park. The River Center is here, an aquarium with native sea life, including touch tanks. Also a boat ramp here. We now arrive at the Jupiter Inlet. This is as far north as we will go. We'll take you inside the lighthouse in a bit. But first, let me explain what is across from the lighthouse. The Jupiter Inlet Village, known as a funky fishing village, where you can take cruises and fishing charters, like the Manatee Queen, that offers both the Palm Beach Island and Jupiter Island Sunset Cruise. $70 for adults, $43 for children. There's the Blue Heron Fishing Charter, $70 for a half day fishing trip. The Conk Cruise offers a 30 minute cruise for $10 or enjoy fresh seafood while overlooking the inlet and the lighthouse at Jetty's Waterfront Restaurant. You can rent a boat at Jupiter Inlet Boat Rentals. Now let's go further down the Loxahatchee River to the mouth of the inlet. On the right, Du Bois Park and Jupiter Beach Park, connected to each other by a small wooden bridge. Du Bois Park faces the inlet and features jetties on a lagoon. Both parks have picnic tables, restroom facilities, and outdoor showers. Du Bois Park with benches overlooking the Loxahatchee River. A playground, a snorkeling lagoon, boat slips, canoeing, and kayaking access. Jupiter Beach Park has a jetty on the ocean at the mouth of the inlet with a sand volleyball court. The parks are open sunrise to sunset, while the jetties and inlet fishing is open 24 hours. The Jupiter Inlet Lighthouse is the oldest structure in Palm Beach County, built in 1860. You can climb inside to the observation deck. It is $12 for adults or $6 for children. There is a museum where you can see a video about the lighthouse. Interactive exhibits on the property where you can learn about the early pioneers and the Native Americans of the area. Also a hiking trail to a lagoon overlook through the Florida habitats. The lighthouse is 156 feet above sea level, although only 108 feet tall because it sits on a 48-foot hill. 
The hurricane of 1928 blew out one of the bullseye lenses. You can still see the cracked glass. Ironically, the lens was sent to Charleston, location of our last video, was reassembled and held in place by two crossbars. As the sun sets on West Palm Beach, the nightlife of Clematis Street comes to life. Flagler Park stretches from Flagler Avenue to Clematis Street. During December, the location of Holiday in Paradise, where a 35-foot tree sits, and along with the surrounding palm trees, displays music and light shows in the evening. But even if you are here during other months, you can enjoy the Centennial Fountain at Clematis Street. Renovated in 2020 and display synchronized water spouts and sprays with lights and fog throughout the year. Next to Flagler Park is the Meyer Amphitheater, where major outdoor festivals and concerts happen. In between Flagler Park and Meyer Amphitheater is E.R. Bradley's Saloon, a large open-air tavern with multiple TVs, five bars, big enough to host private events, a hammock in the front lawn. The Sassafras Restaurant, with the magenta uplighting, street-side dining. Around the corner, the American Craft Ale Works, with couches on the sidewalk to lounge in style. Lenore's Italian Restaurant, the Grease Sports Bar with burgers, brews, whiskey, and live music. The Batch Southern Kitchen, the Sushi Yama. We are going to try Rocco's Tacos, where you can get a taste of Mexico in a fun and casual environment. A tequila bar as well. I'm trying their California fish taco. Really good and healthy too. Just a lively colorful atmosphere on Clematis Street. Excellent for dining on the street. Also the West Palm Beach trolley is free and a good way to travel between Clematis Street and the square as well as the waterfront and the Kravis Center which is the performing arts center in West Palm Beach. After a nice meal, it's time to get back to the hotel. We stayed at the pet-friendly La Quinta Inn, located at the Florida Turnpike in Okeechobee Boulevard. Was really happy with this location. Being right off the Florida Turnpike in Okeechobee Boulevard is a straight five-mile drive to downtown and goes over the Royal Palm Bridge into Palm Beach. So very easy to get to all the places of interest. A subway across the street when you want to eat healthy and save money from the expensive restaurants. So while West Palm Beach is known for the rich and famous, it is really a good place to visit for people of all income levels. With all the nature areas that are free or very minimal costs, I think you'll find you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to enjoy the Palm Beaches. We have put links and addresses below to help you plan your West Palm Beach getaway. And there was so much that we didn't cover, like Mont's Botanical Garden or Norton Museum of Art, and others. So I'd be interested to hear what you have enjoyed in the Palm Beaches in the description below. Again, thank you to our subscribers. Your tips give us the idea of what to film. Very helpful. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel videos across the USA. For licensing or stock footage, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Next, we head back to the Sun Coast, to a beach that always ranks in TripAdvisor's top beaches in the U.S. every year, Clearwater Beach. After that, new videos of Miami and the Florida Keys. The U.S. is now opening up its borders to foreign travelers. It will be glad to see many of our friends from across the pond in our northern border snowbirds back again. No better place to travel right now than in Florida. From the Palm Beaches, I wish you blessings to you, wherever you may be.